You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and on this special edition, we're going to be discussing the plans for the European Super League. Now, it almost feels as though Arsenal's really drab and disappointing and dull performance against Fulham in the Premier League yesterday has just been completely forgotten about because there seems to be bigger news. And this news concerns the future of football, the future of the English game um, and it's bad news. It, it, it really is bad news. And I'm going to sort of try and, and sort of unpack what has gone on, explain why I think it's occurred, and explain why ultimately, as much as I'm disappointed with Arsenal, I don't think they had much choice but to get on board with this. So you might disagree with me, and if you do, that's absolutely fine. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. But if it's going to happen with or without Arsenal, then I think Arsenal have to be in it. And um, it's a sad state of affairs. It's sad to see that football has reached this point um, and that greed, money and power have taken over. But it's the reality of where we are right now. Um, so to give you guys a little bit of background, I know you've been following the news, but I just want to put what I'm saying into a bit of context. It was announced yesterday uh, by uh, 12 clubs that they had founded the uh, European Super League. That Those English clubs involved are, of course, Arsenal, Manchester United, Manchester City, Liverpool, Tottenham and Chelsea. The likes of AC Milan, Inter, Juventus are all involved. Barcelona, Real Madrid, etc, etc. But I guess what people kind of overlooked at, at the initial stages is this is not designed to be a replacement for the Premier League. This is designed to be a replacement for the UEFA Champions League. These clubs have come together, they've sat around the table, discussions have been going on for a while, there's been murmurs and rumours about this for quite some time, and have basically decided that actually they can make more money and it can be more profitable if they were to set up their own competition and cut out UEFA, who are pocketing an absolute fortune off the back of the Champions League every single year. Well, these guys have got together and decided that actually the product would be the same. In fact, especially with the Champions League's proposed reform, this product could be better and this product would see them earn the money. Ultimately, me, you, everybody else, we tune in to watch the teams. We don't tune in because it's UEFA's competition. We tune in to watch those teams. So UEFA, in a way, have created this by being greedy, by being corrupt, uh, by just basically not giving a shit about football. Um, for years and years and years, UEFA have pushed these clubs to the point where they've decided that they, they want to do this and they want to go off by themselves. Now, am I saying it's the right thing to do? No, but not because I'm afraid of it pissing off UEFA. I'm not sitting here worried about UEFA. I'm worried about how they're going to cope with it. To be honest, I couldn't give a shit about UEFA. The reality is that... It's the, it's the knock-on effects that this has on domestic competitions that makes this such a bad move for football. You know, you look at somebody like Arsenal, and I'll use Arsenal as, as an example because it's the club I know best. And we are a club who are fighting at the moment, year in, year out, desperately trying to get back into the Champions League. Why? Not because the Cronkies think we can win it, because they need the revenue that comes with it. So signing up to this European Super League means that Arsenal, regardless of how well or how poorly they perform, will be involved in the top European competition every single season and will bring in revenue that is bigger than the revenue the Champions League currently offers. From a purely business perspective, it is an absolute no-brainer. And sometimes we have to remember that these people are business people before football club owners. They don't care about football. Stan Kroenke probably never even heard of the sport before he bought Arsenal. Like it is, Don't get sucked in and, and feel or think that these people care as much about the football club and about the sport as we do. If Arsenal didn't take this deal, if Arsenal were one of the clubs that stopped and said, no, we're not doing it, we're going to make a stand, what would we all be saying? I can guarantee you there would be a section of our supporters out there 
saying that, look what the Cronkies have done. They've made us stay behind. They've left us sort of, you know, with the smaller clubs. We're obviously not a big club anymore because we're not part of the European Super League. So I don't agree with the overall concept. I have to stress that point. I don't like what it does to the domestic leagues, the fact that it devalues them um, and the standoff it's now caused between UEFA, the Premier League, Serie A, La Liga, etc., etc., and some of their biggest clubs. But as I said right at the top of the video, if it's going to happen, Arsenal have to be a part of it. And Arsenal are a part of it. The Premier League, obviously, and UEFA have threatened to, to kick our clubs out of their competitions uh, off the back of this decision and off the back of this move. But the reality is it will be the death of the Premier League if Arsenal, Manchester United, Manchester City, Chelsea, Tottenham and Liverpool are no longer a part of it. A significant proportion of the Premier League's worldwide audience is because those of those clubs, I'd say probably 70% of it, maybe 75% of the worldwide Premier League audience is because they are interested or have an interest in one of those aforementioned clubs. So to kick them out of the league would be catastrophic for the Premier League. They can't go to Sky, they can't go to BT Sport and say we want X amount of money uh, all these millions and billions of pounds for TV deals if the most appealing clubs are not part of the competition. With all due respect, would you pay a Sky subscription to watch Norwich and Newcastle next season without being able to watch the top teams compete? No, so I'd be very, very surprised if the Premier League follow through on this threat, if UEFA follow through on this threat, which is to kick these teams out of the competition. UEFA will kick up a stink, they'll huff and they'll puff, but ultimately, can they stop this happening? I'm not sure they can. They can put sanctions in place, they can put punishments in place, but the reality here is that their products, whether that be La Liga, Serie A, the Premier League, all of them are significantly damaged and far less valuable without these super clubs uh, being in the mix. So I'm not sure they're going to follow through with this stuff. I'm not sure that Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester City, Tottenham are going to be kicked out of, of the Premier League. I, I just, I can't see how that makes sense for the Premier League. I understand that initially they're going to make a stand against it. And I understand that they're going to do what they can to stop the Super League happening. But can they really stop it without cutting their noses off to spite their face? I don't think so. And it's going to be very, very interesting to see how this develops over the coming weeks and months because, you know, we've, we've seen significant movement in just the last 24 hours. We've seen clubs leaving the ECA. Uh, that's the, the European Committee, uh, European Clubs Association. You've seen lots of uh, the high profile clubs that have been mentioned walking away from that. Will Bayern Munich join? Will Borussia Dortmund join? Will Paris Saint-Germain join? Can you see them really being left behind? Can you see them believing in their principles so much that billions of pounds are on the table and them saying, no, nope, we don't want it. I think they'll join. I, I really do. I think they'll join. I think they'll feel that they have no real other choice. You know, it's, it's, it's a horrible thing and football is at a crossroads and a lot of people have said, rest in peace football, this is the death of the game. This is a change that has been on the cards for a long, long time and I want to stress the point that I'm not for it. I, I absolutely am not. Imagine the Premier League where only the winner actually gets some recognition. What would be the incentive to finish second, third, fourth if you're going to be in the Super League anyway? For Arsenal, for example, you know, you, you look back on this season and it probably makes you realise why there's been very little pressure on the management and the club to finish in, in a higher position because ultimately this was on the table. This was coming. This was just around the corner. So... Um, I don't agree with it. I want to stress that point again, and I will stress it as many times as needed. But it's, this is the next stage in football. It's almost like a kind of NFL style, um, you know, league where there's no relegations, no promotions. They're talking about five clubs having to qualify for the Super League. How that happens, we're not exactly sure yet. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see sort of the plans develop further. But, you know, football is at a crossroads now. UEFA, the Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, you can understand their hard stance on it initially, but they've got to consider their products and their businesses. Can the Premier League survive without the big six? Yes, it can survive, 
but will it thrive without the big six? My answer would be absolutely not. Um, the levels of investment into the game, i.e. sponsorships, i.e. TV rights, all of that, for me, reduces significantly in the event that those teams leave or are kicked out. The European Super League's plan was not to replace the Premier League. The initial plan was for those teams to continue competing in their domestic competitions. And so they will claim that this is not a breakaway. They will claim that that was never their intention. But I'm sure they were aware that the Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, UEFA, etc. were going to have to respond and that their response would be quite hard and quite harsh. But I think they know. I think they're fully aware of the fact that those products are significantly damaged without their presence. And I don't think they believe that the Premier League, UEFA, etc., etc., will actually follow through with kicking these teams out of their competitions. The, the repercussions of that would be too big. And as such, um, their products would die. And, and so I think we're at a point now where there's a lot of noise. But I would advise caution on this. I would stay calm because I think there's a lot more to happen in the coming months. You know, will it go ahead? I think it will. Um, but will it mean the exclusion of those teams from domestic competitions, from UEFA competitions? I'm not entirely sure about that part. And I'd be very, very surprised if UEFA or the Premier League and all the other top leagues out there have the actual cojones to say, fine then, you're not playing in our league. Because what are their leagues without those clubs? They're a far less attractive proposition. And, um, and that's the reality of it. It's not good for football. It's not good for our club, um, you know, in terms of the connection that we have between our fans. But it's a direction of travel in which the club have been heading for a while. It's a direction of travel in which many of these big clubs have been heading in for a while. And the fact that so many of them have agreed to it um, tells you that, you know, they've got like minded owners who are only interested in the business element and the business side of things. And we have to. I'm not going to say accept it, we shouldn't accept it, but I'm not sure there's a great deal we can do about it. So it's a really, really sad time for football and we're at a crossroads and I'm not really sure where we go from here. Will the Premier League change off the back of it? They'll say it will, but right now I'm not 100% convinced. So those are some of my initial thoughts on the European Super League. And as I say, I want to reserve my kind of full judgment until... Um, you know, this develops further. What will it actually mean? It feels like the, there are many threats going around at the moment, lots of stories, but will they come to fruition? Will the Premier League, will La Liga, will Serie A follow through with the idea of banishing these clubs from their competitions um, as a response to the creation of the Super League? I'm not sure they can afford to, and that's why I'm not panicking just yet. But from a business perspective, as I said earlier on, from Arsenal, from an Arsenal side, Stan Kroenke was never going to turn that down. He was never going to turn down the opportunity to bring in such huge revenue from the top European competition um, year in, year out, regardless of how well Arsenal perform. It stabilises the club's future during what's a very difficult time. And you've got to consider that the clubs on the continent who have signed up to this, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Inter, Milan, etc., Juve, We've been talking a lot about their financial situations over the last few months as well and the impact of the pandemic. I think this was always on the cards, but I genuinely believe that the pandemic has maybe sped up the process a little bit. And that's why you're seeing so much movement so quickly. The reformed Champions League. Uh, listen, I love the Champions League, but the plans are not exactly watertight and they don't really appeal to me. So um, they've seen an opportunity. Looks like they're going to take it. But can they avoid the repercussions that come with it uh, with regards to the domestic competitions and then the subsequent loss of interest from some of their fans? Who knows? We're going to have to wait and see. Don't forget, if you haven't already, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're approaching 13,000, so I would really appreciate you clicking on that subscribe button. Give me a follow on Twitter at Harry Simu and download the Le Bomb app, the predictor game where you take on your friends rather than the bookmakers. You can find the link in the description. So get downloading and check that out. Let me know what you think. And let me know what you think about the European Super League. Does it spell the end for football as we know it? Does it spell the end for the Premier League? Let's see. But remember, the Premier League came along once and, um, and changed the landscape. It's not the first time it's happened and it probably won't be the last.